Hello folks, it's me, the Gingy Dome here, and today I am going to be beginning the ranking of the top 100 best wrestlers of all time. Really, it's favorite, I'm just calling it best because YouTube likes the word best, but really, truly, it's my favorite. My f top 100 favorite wrestlers. This is all my opinion, uh, and this list is, compiling a list like this is extremely difficult, extremely difficult, uh, and fairly time-consuming, uh, which is A, why I'm splitting into multiple, more digestible parts, so I can talk about each wrestler individually longer. Uh, however, with that being said, a hundred is a smaller number than you might think. There are a lot of guys on this list that I might even enjoy in the ring better than some of, but I would prefer to talk about that person in this setting. And overall, my opinion of, I just feel, fits more in that place. Fits more in a list like this. However, I will, in a moment, go over some honorable mem honorable mentions. Some names I feel, uh, when in a conversation of best, need to be mentioned. However, will not be uh, talked about on this list. Uh, I simply will mention them. Uh, before that, though, a couple ground rules on who will be excluded from this list. Very obviously, people I don't really care for all that much. Not saying they're bad, not saying anything about them, uh, but folks that might have contributed so much to the history of wrestling that just personally aren't my taste, aren't going to be on here. So, no Hulk Hogan, no Lex Luger, uh, no Ultimate Warrior, right? Uh, and also, uh, there is a certain level of controversy I am willing to accept uh, for how big they are uh, in terms of a name. Uh, and I know that's sort of jaded and biased, However, I think in certain circumstances that separating the art from the artist is important. And when I get to wrestlers that do have big controversies uh, that, that I don't really approve of tacked on, I will mention them. However, uh, some wrestlers, while I might enjoy their in-ring work, I can't include on this list for more reasons for me would be uh, Chris Benoit. Uh, 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 Jimmy Snuka, uh, Austin Aries, Teddy Hart. Right, right. So, now let me get to the honorable mentions. Scott Hall, Vader, Antonio Inoki, Buzz Sawyer, DDP, Stevie Richards, Matt Seidel, X-Pac, Adam Cole, Giant Baba, Dusty Rhodes, Cody Rhodes, Bobo Brazil, Iceman King Parsons, Sanjay Dutt, Lee Moriarty, Loki, Mike and David Von Erich, Abdullah the Butcher, Norman Smiley, Terry Funk, Jim Neidhart, Jerry Briscoe. Those following are great performers in their own right. However, I will not be talking about in length on this list. With that being said, let's get through 100 through 91. Number 100 is Mark Henry. Mark Henry had a big influence on me when I just started getting into wrestling. He's one of the guys that immediately popped out to me. Now, I must say, I am not an average individual, and some less well-known really stuck out to me that will be on this list. However, Mark Henry was huge. A little story time, how I got into wrestling was actually through... Uh, the SmackDown vs. Raw 2010, a Nintendo game, and for whatever reason, he and that game stuck out to me, so I googled YouTube clips of him and another wrestler, who I'll talk about a couple videos down the line, uh, really, I googled YouTube clips of, and from there, decided to start watching the show in 2016. At that time, Mark Henry's career was winding down, but he was still in it, uh, but all he's accomplished he is a rightful world champion holder. He deserved it. Uh, and while he might not have the best in-ring work rate on consistency, what he does have in consistency is great power spots. 
great appearance, great, uh, great presentation in general. He is a little muscly meatball, and I love him. Number 99 is John Cena. This is a placing that is going to piss off literally everyone. People are either going to A, be upset that he's on the list in general, or B, be upset that he's not much higher up the list. He's, he's at number 99, and that for me is because he is entertaining enough and important enough to warrant being on this list. And when I say important enough, I mean that for better and for worse. Uh, yes, he is he is a more palatable Hulk Hogan, essentially. However, in my opinion, he is a lot more charming and charismatic than Hulk Hogan, has a higher uh, in-ring work rate than Hulk Hogan. He actually, while there are criticisms to be held about his in-ring work rate, he has pretty consistently put on some great matches uh, against the likes of CM Punk and AJ Styles, uh, and even Randy Orton on a couple of occasions, even though we've all seen that match too much. Uh, uh, when he wants to go, he can go very, very well. Uh, he ultimately, for me, is, I think, a great a great sort of mouthpiece for the wrestling industry, a great face for the wrestling industry, especially with WWE. While they aren't my favorite product now, they are the most recognizable product. And I'm glad he's back uh, for one final run. I hope he gets a world championship in that run. Uh, so that brings us to number 98, a sad one to talk about, Gary Albright. Gary Albright could have been much higher up on this list if he wasn't, if he didn't pass away in his prime. Uh, Gary Albright was an incredibly smooth, incredibly technical, stiff wrestler who could, uh, who could hang with the likes of the Pillars of Heaven, uh, Dr. Death and Stan Hansen, uh, in all Japan. However, in 2000, he had a heart attack while in the ring, uh, uh, and, and passed away thereafter. And that is such a shame, because the handful of years that we got of Gary Albright, there are some incredible matches there. Incredible, incredible matches uh, against the likes of uh, Saruta and Kobashi. Uh, and I believe he had a good one with Dr. Death. Moving on from that. Uh, a wrestler that is particularly popular right now, Samoa Joe. Uh, he arguably had his big boom of popularity in the early 2000s. However, I think right now he is riding on sort of a wave of popularity. Because everyone loves Joe. There's no reason, in my opinion, to dislike Joe. He has a sort of realness to him. That sort of natural charisma. He has this sort of rough-around-the-edges quality matched with a perfect sense of when to snap into this nice crispness, this nice fluidity. He knows when things need to be choppy uh, to look brawly or more real or to fit into a story, and he knows when, for a spot, things need to flow like butter. He is so good at reading a room. He's incredible at reading a room. He is a great uh, storyteller, a great spot worker. But overall, uh, overall, I think his stiffness is what sticks out to me. Uh, his ability to come off as both a brawler and a high flyer, uh, especially in his early career. Uh, however, the, the only complaint I would have is a similar one that I have with Keith Lee. Uh and that is that occasionally, and this is on a rare occasion, uh, it seems his performances seem a tad bit disjointed and more spot focused than match focused. And that is very rare. However, I, that's just something I want to acknowledge. Uh, uh, by using his praises, praises, credible in the ring, uh, 
overall, he deserves to be a top guy. He deserved a lot better than he got in the WWE. And I'm glad he's starting to see more of that uh, mainstream recognition now that he is ROH TV champion. I hope he will very soon be ROH world champion uh, with a good stint in there before maybe hopefully going full-time in AEW. But even if he just sticks to ROH from now on, uh, he will have secured himself a very good legacy. Number 96 is Kevin Von Erich. Fun fact, I like Kevin Von Erich a bit more in the ring than I like Kerry Von Erich, but he is quite a bit below Kerry Von Erich. And that is that Kerry Von Erich, I'll, I'll get to this when I get to the, him, had more of a presence, more of a charm to him, more of a connectability. All of Carrie's matches had more of a big match feel. However, Kevin's matches were always insanely fun. Kevin Von Erich was an extremely dynamic performer. He was so dynamic in what he could do uh, in that you talk about... Uh, connectivity and smoothness, Kevin Von Erich can just boom, 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 boom. Uh, 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 he had a doozy of a match against Chris Adams and WCCW, uh, another doozy against Buzz Sawyer. He's just so good, so underrated. Uh, and I, I love the Von Erichs in general, and yes, their story, uh, of course, is is ultimately one of tragedy, but I love to see Kevin still hanging around and Ross and Marshall uh, taking after their dad's footsteps. Uh, number 95 is Vampiro. Vampiro is cool, period. Vampiro is good in the ring, he was, uh, and while he had a very short period of relevance, he left enough of an impression uh, to, I think, be worthy of being on this list. Vampiro is just cool. He was, in my opinion, from the late 90s to their death, WCW's best wrestler. Uh, in terms of presentation, the best asset they had. Maybe not best in the ring. I will, in fact, say not best in the ring. But in terms of... Pure assets, pure things that they could have milk but squandered. Vampiro was one of them. Truly, if he had have gotten more of a shot in the big time beyond WCW, or if WCW had better booking, I think he could have been a huge star. But overall, uh, while because he was in WCW, he didn't have the chance to have clinics uh, necessarily. When you look at his matches, specifically at the stuff he was doing in them, you begin to see that this was the right man in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, that brings us to number 94, Pat Patterson. Uh, Pat Patterson is cool. Pat Patterson is very cool. He was the first Aaron Connell champion. Uh, he was one of the best heels in the 70s. Uh, he was... He, he knew his role very well. He was very... Uh, very typical. I, I don't say that in a negative fashion. He was very typical of his generation in that he perfected what was expected of him in his generation. And that was for, at that time, the heel to mostly be there to sell for the babyface. Mostly. I say mostly there are uh, circumstances that is not true. Uh, however, for his time especially, that being the, uh, that being the mid-70s, uh, even on into the early 80s, the heel was there to, uh, uh, there to make the baby face look good and then get heat. And that's pretty much as simple as it was, that's a formula that they still sort of teach, that you're still kind of trying to do, not to that basic and fundamental of a degree, to a point to where Patterson could draw good heat. He wasn't 
the best at it. I also think that when he did get chance to shine in the ring, he did shine in the ring. Uh, I think he was very noteworthy in, again, overall presentation. Uh, heel work, very good. Ultimately, he's on this list for significance that he has provided both on stage and off stage, backstage. Uh, uh, historical significance being the first Intercontinental World Champion, and he is a gay icon. I, I love Pat Patterson. Yes, he gets brownie points because I am bi, and I, I, I just love, I, I just, I just like him in general. Like I said, this is a list about people I like, and Pat Patterson at that time, in the 70s especially, with the times the way they were, he stole the show in a way that I think should still be remarked today. But today, all people remember him for is that silly skit with him in the dress in the Attitude Era. Damn shame. Next, number 93, is Chris Hero. Chris Hero was arguably the king of the indie scene at one point. Uh, rightfully so. And I say king of the indie scene... Because at that time, I believe there were two kings. I believe there was the king of TNA and ROH. And while Chris Hero did do some work in ROH, I believe he is and should be better known for what he did everywhere else. He could show up on any show and make that show a must-see event for whoever, for whatever indie fan is in that attraction. Chris Hero is going to be at my show, my event. He's going to wrestle my top guy. Uh, it, it felt like an occasion. Chris Hero was an occasion. Uh, tr truly unto himself. Uh, his sort of wrestling style is very indicative of his time as well, uh, in a similar way to Pat Patterson, in that he very much has that indie style, but he has fiddled it down to a fine craft. Whittled, not fiddled. He has whittled it down to a fine craft of, of spot work mixed with connective tissue. Spot work mixed with the what we need to get to the spots. And I think overall that Chris Hero sort of defined what it meant to be an indie star. Because he was not just an indie wrestler, he was an indie star. Number 92 is Test. Again, this is how much I like them. Test is severely underrated. Severely and I say that with a capital S severely. Test, yes, he was a mid-card guy. Could he have risen very high above where he was? Probably not. I, th I genuinely think, under the right circumstances, he could have been in a main event scene while not the champion. Uh, I think Test, though, had this just... He understood what it meant to be a ruthless aggression era talent. Uh, he was on TV pretty consistently during that time, and all of his matches were memorable enough. Were memorable enough. And in terms of individual spot work, he does not get enough credit. The man's finisher shakes you to your core. His big boot is undoubtedly the best in the industry. Was he sadly also passed away uh, relatively young. Uh, but his big boot will probably go unbeated. And in terms of just in-ring quality, he had this consistency. And I think that's why he was on TV so often during that time. He had this consistency that very few people could hit. He consistently had three and a half to four star matches, in my opinion. Uh, if you're talking TV matches anyway, if you're grading on that scale, he could take a small amount of time and run with it. He could make the most of seven minutes, of five minutes. He, whether he was getting someone else over or getting himself over, no matter who he was working with, he had great matches with Mark Henry. He had a great match against Val Venus, who uh, is another one of the controversy ones uh, that, that is not on this list. Uh, 
he was just so consistently good, so believable, so, uh, whenever he was in a match, you'd go into that match knowing, okay, the other guy is most likely going to win because Test was a mid-carder, so whenever it was a big match with Test in it, but during that match, he could make you believe that he had a shot, uh, that he deserved to be there, uh, and, yeah, Test, for me, is just so underrated. Speaking of underrated, number 91, Dino Bravo. A lot of people on the early half of this list, the early section of this list, uh, died early. Uh, Dino Bravo was among them. Uh, Dino Bravo, so underrated. He was so prominent in the 80s, so prominent for the time that he was in, 80s and late 70s, uh, but mostly the early, uh, the early to mid 80s, Dino Bravo was, was sort of a final boss level threat at times, especially for the upper mid card. Maybe not for the main event, but for the upper mid card, he was the guy to beat. He was sort of the gatekeeper between top guys and mid carders. Dino Bravo had amazing presentation a sort of great stiffness about him, as well as this whole gravitas, this whole he made you believe that he was in control uh, the whole time, and they didn't have to exactly build him like a monster. He wasn't like King Kong Bundy, where it's just, oh, me big man, me slam, me win. It was this, you believed that Dino Bravo was an incredible wrestler who just so happened to be a dickhead. Uh, and he was so good in that role. So, so good. Uh, I think where he died early, uh, early his, his impact, for whatever reason, didn't seem to last. And I think that's a damn shame. I really do. I think that's a damn shame. He meant a lot to the industry at the time. Uh, and I truly believe that uh, he is worthy of being on the top 100 list. Uh, and I hope that him being on this list, as well as others like Testa, Mark Henry, uh, and Chris Hero, and all them, everyone I've mentioned this video, uh, I hope that this, at the very least, inspires someone to go out and look up some of their work. See, see just what they're about. See what they could do. Uh, and, and try to understand why I put them on this list. Next time, it will be 90 through 81. Uh, the video will probably be just a bit shorter where I won't have to go through the whole preamble. But, yes, uh, that is it for today. I hope you all have an absolutely lovely day. And I'll talk to you when I talk to you. If you liked it, hit that little bell. When you subscribe, uh, the fuck, f f f flippin', flippin' like. Okay. B b uh, bye.